All right, I would like to welcome you all to the final press conference of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games featuring our fittest on earth. Uh, I'll start by introducing from Team Invictus, uh, Jorge Fernandez, Brittany Weiss, Joshua Al Shamar, Devin Kim. In the middle, we have GM of CrossFit, Dave Castro. We have fittest woman on earth, Laura Horvat, and fittest man on earth, Jeffrey Adler. Similar to how we've uh, done every press conference, we're, we're just gonna jump right into the questions. Uh, so please raise your hand that when you are called upon, please state your name and the outlet that you're with. Before we start, I just a big thank you to all the fans who have stuck around to listen to our champions tonight. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll go to Yash in the front row. This is a question for Team Invictus. 10 years from now, as fans look back on this year's win, what do you want the world to know about this Invictus team and this year's games? Take it. Go ahead. Um, I think the best thing to say in 10 years from now, I want, I and mean, I think we all want people to look back and see that real affiliates and communities can pull through and win this thing. Um, we may be a program, but we all train under the, the same gym. We're in the same house. We do it together day in and day out. And, you know, up until this point, we may have not been superstars, but we pull through for each other. And I want people to see that. We'll go to Tegan. Oh, Tegan, morning, chalk up. Uh, this question for Dave. Uh, individuals we didn't see hit a barbell other than the Olympic total until the final day of competition. How do you think that impacted the leaderboard and was the outcome what you expected? Check. I don't think it um, affected the leaderboard in any negative way. I think definitely the fittest people alive were crowned and the right people were crowned. When you look at these two, it's not a stretch that they should be on top, right? Regardless of what we program, they should at this stage where they're at um, physically and where they at are at with their performance. We could put four or five different sets of programming out there for different versions and uh, the outcome would likely be the same. And that's what it is. That's what it represents when you test for fitness. And um, it has to be well-rounded and not biased towards one specific realm. Uh, in terms of not having barbells till later, um, that's kind of a unique um, expression that we've, we've done stuff similar before in the past where we've had regionals where we had no barbell. So we definitely like to push the envelope on some of that stuff and test new things. Laura, Laura and Jeff, uh, do you have a comment on the same same thing? Coming on this thing? Comment. I comment? Yeah. Does this work? Yeah. I like barbells, but it seems like I don't need them, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I can say the same. I love barbells. All right, we'll go to Scott next. So first of all, congratulations to you all, but this is for Jeff. Five months ago, we talked. You called your shot. One, how does it feel to complete that mission? And two, how much better can you get? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, how much better can I get? You'll have to ask the coaches. Uh, they, they know their stuff. They know it pretty well. And uh, I'm guessing they're going to make me work really hard in the next year. Um, I do think I can be better. Uh, and we're going to analyze the, the finishes of my, 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 my events. And we'll see about that. Um, but yeah, I did call my shot for a podium. I didn't call it for winning, which is different. And I'm very happy that we were able to get uh, the number one spot. Go back to Tegan. Uh, Dave, this is a question for you again. I think I know the answer. Can you share the location for the games in 2024? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, follow up to that. Since you are not sharing, can you give us some insight into what went into the decision for where it will be? We've um, took a lot of, a look at a lot of different areas and a lot of different venues, um, locations that would be an ideal host for a variety of reasons, venues that would be an ideal host for a variety of reasons. And the location we're 
leaning towards or working with will be a great home for the CrossFit Games um, in the near future. Also, though, remember, I'm talking about we're talking about kind of doing it differently. And so, um, so what was that? Brazil, not yet, not Brazil yet. I think laying the groundwork and foundation for being able to take this overseas is some of what we're what we're doing in the uh, future years. And so um, we sh we will eventually take it overseas sooner than later, but just not yet. Uh, I do know we have some people from uh, online, so uh, if we can pass the mic back. Hi, yeah, we have an online question for Laura. So lots of podium finishes, but this is your first title. What are you feeling at this moment and how much time do you take before you get back to training and defending this title? Uh, yes, it feels very nice, very good to stand on top of the podium. I've been to all the stages second, third, so this is definitely special to stand on top of the podium and I will definitely take some time off, probably a couple of weeks. <laughs> we'll go back out here in front. Uh, Amy for Clydesdale Media. Uh, Dave, last year we saw that you guys named a Rookie of the Year for male and female. This year there was not both. What was the reasoning behind that? Um, the previous 15 years, we only had one. So last year was the odd year out. This year we decided to go back to just having one. Patrick. PC Be Friendly Fitness. This is for you, Laura. Um, after you won, did, did Ben Smith come up to you and what did he say to you about your win? He told me that this is mine and no one can take this away from me and I worked hard for it and I should be proud of myself. I believe there's another online question. Yeah, this question is for Invictus, specifically the ladies. So um, you spoke yesterday about wanting to get back to the top. Can you all reflect on the feeling you're having right now, having achieved this? Um, for me, I just feel grateful. I mean, for all of us, I think we can all attest that it's been a crazy year. And I think just getting the goal that we wanted and achieving it has been better than anything. <laughs> I mean, she pretty much said it. I'm just, I could be, I'm so emotional about it. Like I'm still letting it sink in. I'm just super grateful. And especially to have these three by my side, it was nothing short of amazing. We're going to Clydesdale. Jamie with Clydesdale. Um, my question's for Dave. With things like cuts, withdrawals, backfills, is there any thought process to allowing basically the next athlete available in line, just being at the ready, even if it happens five minutes before an event? Logistically, that'd be really hard, but we, with time, we're able to do that. We did that this year with um, an athlete on the female side. The, when we did the cut from, I think it was um, down to 30, one of the athletes wasn't able to go. So with enough prep, preparation and time, we let the athlete who was just one out come up with like the the situation you described five minutes before you know there's a lot of logistics with heat sheets and broadcast there's a lot of moving parts in the backgrounds with that type of timeline no it's it's really not possible but um but in other situations we definitely try to uh, accommodate it let me say this about Devin and some of the um, younger athletes in general several years ago I don't remember what the exact year was or date we decided to add the, we've had age group for a long time, but we decided to add the teen division. And one of the things when we added the teen division was we talked about how, hey, this is going to be obviously where we see the future champions and the feeder divisions. And it's really cool to see people like Devin who competed multiple years in the age group, the the teen groups. And and Emma did too. She yeah. came, yep. And Emma. And so it's really the, the system is, is working and it's it's becoming our feeder system for future champions. So watch those divisions because a lot of those athletes end up here. And that's really cool to see. We'll go to the front to Yash. This is another for Invictus. I'm curious, what does it take emotionally as teammates to win at the highest level? 
Um, to answer your question, I would say understanding each other. Uh, we all got different lives. We have different jobs and stuff. Uh, we have to understand that. Um, and the biggest thing for us was just having each other's back through anything. We had a very tough year this year, but we came together in the last two weeks and just kind of relied on just the past two years and we had each other's backs and look where it ended up. Any others here? Online, are you good? Look everyone, it's Danielle Brandon. <laughs> uh, online question here for Dave. So what do, do, what do today's individual results say about the sport on the global level? Well, it's always been incredibly international. And I think that just really, um, this really solidifies that. And it's gonna continue to become more international in, in nature. We've had many years where there's been podiums where there's only been a few um, Americans. So it's, uh, it's great, it's, it's good for the sport. And uh, there's people all around the world training really hard for this. I knew Danielle was gonna be a distraction. <laughs> Any others? One last thing, I've asked this every every night, but uh, Laura and Jeff, you haven't been here yet. Um, this is our last uh, year in Madison. Um, and I know you spoke to it in the Coliseum. Can you talk about maybe one of your top memories other than what happened today, uh, but some of your some of your favorite memories from Madison? Oh, thank you. That was so much fun. Um, I think my my best memory here is probably uh 2021 event six and seven is the time I had like the first true success here. Um, I'm just really happy that I'm going to be able, well, I hope so, if I qualify next year, to uh, enjoy two different venues, two different places, uh, because I haven't been to Carson, so that's going to be exciting. I can agree with him. Uh, my favorite or like the things that stand out for me was my first year, 2018, when we had the crit race around the park there. That was my all-time favorite event. I loved it. And um, it just holds a special heart in my place. This whole city, it's been where I established myself as a CrossFit Games athlete and why I became the fittest on earth. So I will definitely miss Madison, but I look forward to different places and different venues for sure. Devin and, and Joshua, uh, can you weigh in on your favorite memories of Madison? Can you can you weigh in on your favorite memories of Madison? Oh, I mean, so my first time here was last year, and there was a moment where we walked out onto the Coliseum floor, and uh, Jorge looked at me and said, you've made it here, just enjoy the moment, and I looked up and saw the lights, and that for me has just like stuck in my mind the whole time. So aside from like the podiums and everything, it's just being out on the floor, being able to do what I love day in and day out and then come here and showcase it. So, yeah. Uh, luckily for me, this is my fifth year competing in Madison and every year has just gotten better and better. I've seen myself grow as not only an athlete, but a person. Um, I went to Carson and I'm just excited to see where the next venue is to see if I can just keep growing. We'll have one more from Patrick. One more for you, Devin. Your mom and dad, who've been a part of CrossFit for a while, and how special was it to have them there after you uh, you won? Oh, my parents are great. <laughs> um, but having their support since being a kid here has been awesome. They've never not supported me. They've been here through everything. So it's just been great having their support. We'll go to Tegan. Sorry, Dave, one more. We've seen you come in and out of leadership at CrossFit HQ. Are you here to stay for a while? What's going on? Great question. I hope so. I sure fucking hope so. <laughs> There's one last thing I want to point out. Um, Carolyn, Jeff's coach and wife, please stand up. She's also a level three coach which is really cool crossfit level three coach and she's on her way to try to get her level four and so i don't think that is not a part of his success just the fact of how much uh, she gives to her affiliate their affiliate and coaching in general um thank you for being such a significant part of the community and with that we will put a close to the 2023 noble crossfit games congratulations to all of our fittest on earth